So where are we in markets right now? We're just in the boring zone. I posted this on Twitter. The boring zone is that post-halving transition from crypto spring to crypto summer where everything just chops around for a bit. Those of you who are over-trading, which is most of you fuckers, um, get chopped around. You're like, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. The market's gone down and then it's gone back up. I don't want to chase this. I don't want to chase that. And oh my God, just stop doing that. I keep trying to explain. Just the don't fuck this up thesis is to not do that. It's just the only major tokens. You've got some stuff in speculative stuff. Stop trading. Just stop trading. And you can then sit there and go to Spain for three weeks and not care what the market does. Because over time, because of the adoption effects of the technology, you'll do well. Bitcoin analyst Charles Edwards believes that the launch of spot Ethereum exchange traded funds, EPS, may have come too early and could pose a risk to Bitcoin's price if no new capital enters the market. Edwards, founder of Capriol Investments, argues that it would have been better to only have the Bitcoin ETF, BTCF, in 2024. He contends that the new Ethereum ETF will merely distract investors who have already invested in Bitcoin. Current BTC ETF holders at the institutional level may feel the need to diversify slightly and purchase the Ethereum ETF without additional capital flowing into the overall market. This could create sell pressure on Bitcoin, Edwards argued. Since the spot Bitcoin ETF launched on January 11, Bitcoin's dominance has remained fairly stable, increasing by approximately 17.53% and up 0.07% over the past 24 hours, according to TradingView data. While the spot Bitcoin ETF recorded net outflows of $78 million on July 23, the debut trading day of the spot Ethereum ETF saw inflows of $44.5 million and $31.1 million over the following two days. So the boring zone finishes at some point, and then we transition to the banana zone, which is the full crypto summer and crypto fall. Now, those of you who get confused because you don't follow along properly and don't listen, these are not the actual seasons. These are the crypto seasons. So each year is a different season. It's not, oh, it's transitioning to fall because it's September or October. No, 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 you're not listening. Fall is 2025 at some point. And I'll come in to show you how we actually calculate this stuff in a bit, because I think that's an important thing for you. ETF. So ETH comes out, gets fucking slotted immediately. It was so obvious this was going to happen. Um, and that's the scale selling. So there's all of these people have been locked into this damn thing forever. Now have to sell. They want to get out of the trade. They've closed the gap. There's a bunch of arbitrages. So this whole thing needs to mess around for a week or two as we puke out a lot of the people from this, people reposition into the other ETFs and the sales machines of BlackRock and Fidelity and all of these guys go out and start getting the ETH narrative out there. Now, don't forget, it's summer. So they're kind of knocking on the door of their favorite RIA and they're all in the Hamptons or wherever they go. Um, so it's a slower time. But it will get traction. We will see a lot of volumes. Now, the other thing is a lot of you see volumes in the ETFs. So like, oh, my God, they've done 18 gazillion dollars of volume. This is the biggest thing ever because they're being arbitraged. Um, well, that being used as the anchor for the arbitrage. So people are arbitraging the futures contract, which is why when you look at the holders of these ETFs, the biggest ones are like Millennium and all the hedge funds. It was like, look, it's amazing. They're speculating in crypto. No, they're not. What they're actually doing is arbitraging the futures contract with the uh, with the ETF, which acts like spot, because they can't hold spot. There's other people, and these guys don't trade the perps markets. There's other guys arbitraging the perps against the futures, perps against the spot. So there's a lot of these players who are keeping prices together. Arbitrage play a really important role. That is most of the volume. That was most of the volume in all the grayscale trusts as well. They were arbitrages. So... A lot of stuff has to get unwind. So it gets messy and noisy. So I do think there's good opportunities there. I'm still probably, if I held one stock for the next 18 months, it's probably Tesla. And I've talked about this in the past. Tesla's driven by two dynamics. One is car sales. 
Car sales are driven by the economy, and I'll come on and show you some of this stuff in a sec. Um, but they're also driven by technology, the Optimus robots, the robo taxis, self driving, all of this. But this acts as the weighted anchor. And when the business cycle picks up, it pushes this one higher. And before you know, this is why Tesla has these consolidation, sideways, messy, down markets, and then hyper accelerates for the upside. It's based on on the phasing of the two narratives. And when they come into phase, then everything comes. And I'll show you about that phasing in a sec. I just put a log regression and you can see how this works. It's a beautiful channel and it gets to the top, it gets overbought, then sells off. But basically it's a technological adoption trend. Bitcoin, exactly the same, wilder swings, actually a steeper gradient. So again, secular trend. The other key secular trend that I follow is India. India is a very great log trend. It doesn't get as overbought. We haven't had kind of a, the bubble cycle. So we haven't had the two standard deviations, which would be the green line. But my God, it's a beautiful market. So those are the identifiable secular trending markets. Then let's see where we are in the macro season. So the seasons I talked about, same as the crypto seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall. So it's kind of spring is disinflationary boom, rising growth, falling inflation. That's kind of, it's going to get a bit confusing. When we talk about inflation here, we're talking about the rate of change of inflation. This is where we were up until about eight, uh, March. Um, and you'll, you'll see it in a sec. And then the rate of change of inflation is slowing down. And so that's all, 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 all going up. So that gives you the inflationary boom, which is summer. Now, it's not inflationary. There's no inflation coming back. It's not in the 1970s again, all that fucking nonsense. It is just Goldilocks.